and good afternoon, everybody. Good evening, good morning, wherever you are around the world. Hello, uh, and welcome to a live tutorial and playthrough of Marvel Champions LCG. Um, coming out soon. I'll say soon. People keep asking me. I, I've no idea. Um, could be October, could be November. I'm, I'm not sure. I even asked the Asthma Day guys at a uh, convention this weekend. And they either weren't sure or they weren't allowed to tell me. So anyway, if you are watching this live in the chat, uh, sorry, if you are watching this live, please let me know in the chat if you can hear me, see me, and all of the sound is okay. Uh, and if it is, then I will continue. Um, if it isn't, then I'll fix the sound and then I'll continue. But hopefully it's working fine. So yeah, please let me know in the chat if everything is working fine. And then I'm going to crack on uh, and I'm going to switch to this view. And the chat isn't working. Now, it worked five minutes ago. So why, why isn't it working now? Uh, chat viewer settings. Refresh. There we go. Sound is good. Carl's here. Richie Rich is here. All good. Fantastic. Right. Paul is here as well. Excellent. Right. So we're all, we're all here. We're ready to go. Um, now, I was going to spend a bit of time this afternoon... Uh, prepping for this. Unfortunately, things went a bit wrong this afternoon and I haven't had as much time to prepare as I would have liked. So this is going to be a little bit rough and ready. In my defense, this is not a commission video. Okay, this is something that I'm doing purely supported through my Patreon campaign. Um, Asmodee did manage to get me an early sneak preview copy of it. Um, thank you very much to everybody at Asmodee UK for, for making this possible. Uh, but no, this is not a commission video at all. So it's going to be it's going to be a little bit rough and ready. Uh, why aren't you wearing your spandex? It's in the wash, Carl. Yeah, sorry about that. Now then, what is Marvel Champions? Few things about it. So this is an LCG. For those people who don't know, LCG is a living card game. It's Fantasy Flight Games' is sort of answer to the collectible card game genre. But it isn't collectible in a way in that you don't buy a booster pack and get a random thing. The living card game is when you buy a pack you know exactly what you're getting in that pack. So yes, this game is going to have expansions. Once a month, there's going to be an expansion that comes out, which you go and you buy. But you won't be opening random cards and trading with your mates. You will be getting exactly what is in the pack. Um, now, the biggest change that they've made... Oh, David's back again. Hello, David. Um, the biggest change they've made is ever since Fantasy Flight Games started doing their LCG range, I don't know, a long time ago. And what was their first LCG? Was it the Lord of the Rings one? I'm not sure. But anyway, five, six, seven years ago, they started the LCG range. One of the criticisms that they faced is that you have to buy more than one core set. Now, certainly in games like Netrunner or Game of Thrones, there were certain cards that you only got one of in a core set, and you were allowed to play three of in your deck. Therefore, you needed to buy three core sets so that you have three of those rare cards, okay? Even the Arkham Horror LCG, which I absolutely love, you kind of need to buy two core sets if you want to play with more than two people, okay? So they've had this criticism for a while. They've fixed it. I'm assuming it's in direct response to all of the criticism that they've had, but the Marvel Champions LCG box is fully playable from one to four players without you needing to buy any other core set. You only need one core set, which is music to my ears because I would have bought two, and then had loads of spare bits to throw away. So, the price point is higher, as you would expect. I think it's probably one and a half times what the normal LCG price would be, but you get everything in for four players. So this is a one to four player cooperative card game set in the Marvel Universe. Uh, universe. And I'm gonna be going through some basics of it first. And again, I, I read a little bit about it. I browsed through the rules last night on the train on the way home from London. And I'm going to be telling you what I know about it. What I will tell you is that I'm super excited about this game. I like card games. I'm a Magic the Gathering player from old. I, I just love card games. I love cooperative games. And I'm a Marvel fan. So when I, when this game got announced at the in-flight report at Gen Con, I was drooling uh, like a slug. Is that a phrase? If it isn't, I've just made it up. Uh, AJ's here. Hello, AJ. So, yeah, it's one to four player. It's fully cooperative. Now, there are five heroes in the base set. Where's my zoom control? Here we go, zoom control. So the five heroes that you get in the base set are uh, Spider-Man, Iron Man, uh, Captain Marvel, Black Panther, and She-Hulk, which for me is a little bit of an odd choice. 
that they've gone with She-Hulk rather than Hulk, and they've gone with, you know, they haven't gone with Captain America. They haven't gone with... I asked Vicky this question last week, and I said, if you were going to pick five heroes for the LCG, which ones would you choose? And she said, like, well, it would be Iron Man, probably Spider-Man, probably Thor, probably Hulk, you know, the... And, you know, Black Widow, maybe. Yeah, the five ones from the original Avengers films. But they haven't done that. They've actually gone with these five, so that's fine. Um, Adam saying, be interested in see if it'll replace Legendary Marvel. I'm not a big fan of the Legendary game mechanisms. So, uh, yes. So, yeah, this has definitely replaced that for me because I wouldn't really play that. Anyway, you've got five characters to choose from. Each character, let's take Iron Man for a start. Each character comes with a few things. Now, the first thing you get is you get the character card, which is two-sided. This is a cool thing, which I have not seen in other games before, but you play as Iron Man and Tony Stark. And you once per round, you can basically flip it over so that you're in your superhero mode or your alter ego mode. And the different sides have different abilities, and it actually affects the game in different ways. Um, the character also comes with a fixed deck of, I think it's 15 cards, which are character specific cards to them. You see the icon in the bottom right. So these cards can only ever be used in an Iron Man deck. You cannot have these cards in a Spider-Man deck, okay? I'm not gonna cover deck construction that much because um, I don't fully know all the rules. But anyway, these are the Iron Man cards. Now, as well as these cards, there is this card, which you'll notice I haven't put in a blue back sleeve because it has a different back. This goes in the encounter deck. So if you are playing a scenario and one of the players is Iron Man, this card will get shuffled into the encounter deck and at some point it will come up. So it's, it's a bad card that will happen at some point in the game and each of the characters has a bad card. So Tony Stark's, for example, will it focus? Will it focus? Let's zoom in a bit more. Tony Stark's card is, uh, you may flip to alter ego form, choose... Exhaust Tony Stark, remove business problems from the game, okay, or exhaust each upgrade you control to discard this obligation. Yeah, so it's just a thing that will happen at some point in the game and really, you know, get in the way of it. Now, the other thing that each character comes with, and I think I've got them over here, yep, is a set of Nemesis cards. So, for example, this one I've already sleeved. Uh, it's a set of five cards, and this is Captain Marvel's Nemesis. So again, if you're playing a game with Captain Marvel in, these are the Nemesis cards. Now, you don't shuffle these into the deck at the start of the game. These are set aside, and at some point in the game, based on certain things happening, your Nemesis will trigger and these cards will come out. So that's really cool, the fact that the characters are not just the player decks, but there are other things that are happening as well. Now, let's zoom out a little bit more, because these are the player cards as well. There are four uh, types of player card. Um, the yellow ones, which are justice, the light blue ones, which are leadership, the green ones, which are protection, and the red ones, which are aggression. And I believe from the deck construction rules, you can only choose one of them. But each time you construct your deck for a scenario, you could choose a different one. So Iron Man, for example, might decide one game to play with the aggression cards. So they, they are, I've put them in blue sleeves. They will get shuffled into the player deck. And you don't have to use all of them. You only use certain ones. Um, now you'll notice why, why there are only a few yellow cards and that is because I have already made up, I'm ready to play the solo game, I have made up the Peter Parker Spider-Man deck which it suggests for the tutorial contains all of the Spider-Man cards, um, a whole bunch of the yellow cards and there are also some basic cards as well. So grey ones, basic cards that any character can have. So that's the player cards. I am now going to remove She-Hulk, Iron Man, Captain Marvel, Black Panther. I'm going to get rid of those and shuffle them out of the way. Uh, am I going to try and keep that on camera? Yeah, I'm also going to get rid of these player cards because I already have my player deck already built up, which is this one. And again, I haven't constructed it myself. I've used the pre-selected one, which is actually shown on a little reference card. When you, when you buy the game, this deck actually comes pre-made. So you don't actually need to go through and build it yourself. I had to, because this is an ex-demo copy of the game. But yeah, the game comes, this is in a sealed pack, and it's already there for you. So you can just jump in and start playing straight away. So that's the player deck. The enemies, and, and this bit's quite cool, I think. So there are three enemies. Oh, this is Spider-Man's Nemesis. So I'll need that later on. 
There are three enemies that come with the game uh, in this core set. We have Rhino, who's the one we're going to be fighting today, Claw, and Ultron. And you will choose which villain you want to fight, and then there's regular mode and there's expert mode. We're going to be fighting Rhino today. Regular mode means I use Rhino 1 and Rhino 2. If we were playing expert mode, it would be Rhino 2 and Rhino 3. And it's basically, it's a tougher fight. So straight away, customizable. You can customize the difficulty of the game. So we're going to be fighting against Rhino today. We'll get rid of these other cards. Um, the next thing is the main scheme. And I'm, are these tied to villains? I think these might be tied to the villains because they're color coded. So it suggests for your first scenario to play against Rhino and to use the break in. But there is also underground distribution um, and the Crimson Cowl. And it looks like this is the one for the claw and this is the one for Ultron. So it doesn't look like you can mix Rhino with this. I don't think you can anyway. So I'm going to get rid of these. We are going to be doing the break in, which is the main scheme. And then you can customize the encounter deck further because there are five side schemes. Are they called side schemes? Let's just check what they're called. They are... Sure is in here. This is me being a stickler for always trying to say the right thing. Modular encounter sets. That's it. That's what they are. And there's five of them. And, th and you can choose which one of those you want to add. So today we're doing Bomb Scare. And that is a set of cards which is mixed in to the encounter deck. So we have a pre-built encounter deck. Um, which, which is fixed based on what's on this card here. Uh, so this card is the break-in. And it tells me that to use Rhino 1 and Rhino 2. And then to use the Rhino and standard encounter sets. And one modular encounter set. Now there's rules that I've read where you can customize that. You can change the, en uh, you can change the modular encounter set. Uh, you could even play with two. But it, it would dilute the deck a bit. So... The bomb scare um, encounter set is mixed into there. And all of these other ones we do not need right now. So yeah, we've got, so we've got some customization options on the scenario. Now I'm going to go through the setup first. Um, Christopher's here. Wife just came home from an expo working with a promo. She got a promo. I didn't get a promo. Huh. Right, how do I get a promo? Did you get two, Chris? So setup. Uh, very nice, yeah, so Fantasy Flight, they do learn to play book, and then they do the rules reference. I'm not going to use the rules reference today, I don't think. I'm just going to go straight for the learn to play, which is a very good, as I said, I read this last night on the way, the way home, very nicely laid out, nice graphics, very thematic with the style. Select heroes, right, so we've selected Peter Parker. And I've done that, and we place it alter ego side face up in front of me. So, I am Peter Parker. This is my deck. Oh, hit point dial. So, Peter Parker has 10 hit points. So, that's that. If my hit points go to zero, um, I think I lose. First player token. Don't really need first player token when it's a solo game. The obligations. So, Peter Parker's obligation, I've already shuffled into this deck. It is eviction notice, I think. Have I already shuffled it in? Or did I take it? Ah, there you go. Eviction notice. So this is Peter Parker's obligation. So that has been shuffled in. Uh, I mean, it says set it aside, but that's because you shuffle it in here. The Nemesis cards. So Spider-Man's Nemesis is the Vulture. So these are Spider-Man's Nemesis cards, which it says to set aside. So I've done that. Uh, shuffle the player deck. So yeah, player deck has been built, uh, which is all of the yellow cards, the, some of the grey cards, and then we have card tokens and pools. So we have all sorts of things just at the top there off camera. Uh, yep. Um, right, so that is the setup for the player area. Yeah, so the... The obligation shouldn't have been mixed into the deck yet. I'm already, I'm already ahead of myself on that. Because then we select the villain 
And we're using Rhino. Select the villain's hit points. So Rhino is on 14. So 14 hit points for Rhino. There you go. Um, read the intro text on side 1A, which is basically this, which we've done. Rhino is attacking a shield facility. Right, and then we flip it over, and there was some other setup text as well. Create and shuffle the encounter deck, which is that, and then you shuffle in the obligation card. So that's that done. Right, now, I'm, I'm probably going to zoom in a little bit more so that you can see a bit more about what it is that I'm doing. So obviously, certain things are now off camera, but let's put Rhino up there. Let's put that there. Let's put Rhino's hit points there. Let's put the encounter deck there. Uh, my hit points are here. Uh, my deck is, you kind of probably don't need to see my deck. Oh dear. Uh, let's put it there. Peter Parker's here. So my deck is here. My discard pile is going to be here. And yeah, I'll leave this for the stuff that I, I'm playing. Let's see, let's see if that's enough space. Um, right, okay, so yeah, we're now ready to begin. Huzzah! So as I say, I browse through the rules, and I'm going to give you uh, a quick overview. Basically, the game plays in a series of rounds. Players go first, and if you were playing multiplayer, uh, you'd each take a turn. Um, you go around, I think, in whatever order you want, I think it is. And then the villains take a turn. So, uh, rather than going through all of the rules first, what I'm going to do. See, I'm rolling up my sleeves. It's getting serious. Um, I'm just going to start playing. So on, on your turn, you basically play cards. Oh, yeah, I haven't done my card size. Hand size for Peter Parker is six. It does say so on there. So you get six cards. Two, three, four, five, six. And it uses what is, in my opinion, the best mulligan rule, which is a selective mulligan. So I look at my opening six cards, and I can keep any of them that I want. And any that I don't want, I can get rid of and draw replacements. Now, don't really know the game, so don't really have any idea what's what. So for this demo, I am literally just gonna stick with what I've drawn, but bearing in mind, you do get a selective mulligan if you're playing properly. So I'm gonna put my hand, yeah, I'm gonna put my hand there. So my discard pile is actually gonna go to the left of my deck, which is gonna confuse me, because I always put my discard pile to the right. Sherry's here saying Fantasy Flight are doing one of their live things on October 29th where they're giving away copies of the game. So October 29th must be near the actual release date. Yeah, I heard from somebody today, November 1st, but again, that wasn't a wasn't an asthma day person. So it was probably just somebody randomly guessing. Um, how do we win? How do we lose? So we defeat a villain by reducing its hit points to zero. So we've got to get Rhino down to zero hit points which advances the game to the next villain stage. So then it goes from Rhino 1 to Rhino 2. At that point, Rhino will then get 15 hit points, and then we have to do it again. Now, that hit points is 14 because I'm playing a solo. If it was a two-player game, it would be 28. So it does scale. Um, the villains win if they complete their scheme or if all players are eliminated. And to complete their scheme, they need to have seven threat on here per player in the game. So seven threat on here, and the villains win. Uh, there you go. So that is what we're trying to do. So back to what you do on your turn. Well, according to the player aid that I have on my turn, I can basically play cards uh, from hand, trigger and request actions, uh, use the powers that are on uh, my character card, but using a power exhausts it. So I can only do one of those. Uh, and you can change your form. So once per round, you can change from Peter Parker into Spider-Man. But if you'd already used one of your abilities, then you can't use it once you've once you've flipped over. Um, yeah, right. So that's what we do on my turn. Now, let's have a look at my my character and what his ability is when he's in alter ego, which is recovery three, which basically means I can exhaust to recover three hit points. I haven't taken any damage yet, so I'm not going to be using that ability. But there is another ability on this card, which is uh, resource generate a whatever resource that is, they are all described in the rule, but mental, generate a mental resource, limit once per round. So I don't think it exhausts it, it's just I can only do that once per round. So resources, what are resources for? Well, in this game, resources are what you need to play cards. 
You'll notice that each card has a number in the top left, fairly standard for most CCGs or LCGs, and you have to pay that cost in resources to play the card. But, unlike Arkham Horror and other games, there are no physical resources in the game. So there's no counters to represent resources. What you do is you generate those resources by discarding cards from your hand. So you'll notice these cards in the bottom left have an icon. There are four different types of resources, but if there isn't a specific resource given, so this one, for example, Swinging Web Kit costs three to play, so I can pay for it with any three resources. And you pay for it by discarding the cards from your hand. Now, you do get to draw back up to your hand size at the end of the round, but you're making a decision about which cards you're having to lose temporarily. Um, so yeah, the more expensive a card, the more it costs to play, the more resources you have to spend. So that's what the resources do. Um, right, let's have a look at the cards I've got. There's a few types. I have a mixture of events and upgrades. So let's cover the upgrades first. You pay the cost, you play this card, you attach it to, um, well, this one you attach to a minion. There are no minions in play right now. This is a skill, so you put it under your control. Uh, and this, I'm not sure what this is, it's a condition. But basically these improve my character and allow me to do things. Events are one off. You pay the cost, you play them, you do what it says, and then you discard the card. So let's have a look at the upgrades I've got. I have Tenacity, so it costs two to play, and I could spend a physical resource and discard this card to ready my hero. So once I've used my hero, if this was in play, spend a physical resource, get rid of this card, and I can get my hero back. Okay, that's what that one does. Heroic Intuition, play under any player's control, so that'll be me. Your hero gets plus one Thwart. Thwart is a stat which is on the other side, and it's what you use for reducing the threat on a scheme. Uh, so that's what that does. Spider Tracker, I can only attach to a minion, which makes sense. There are no minions in play right now, I don't think. No, Rhino is a brute and a criminal, not a minion. Right. Haymaker, so hero action, which means I can only use it when I'm in hero form, and it counts as an action. Deal three damage to an enemy. Does that mean I have to exhaust it? Let's just have a look. Uh, hero action. Action abilities are bold. A player can trigger abilities from cards they control in play. Pay the abilities cost. It just says attack. So yeah, I guess you do. I'm probably going to make some mistakes here. So turn on the Klingon subtitles. And any mistakes I make rules-wise, I will add in the Klingon subtitles later on. So that's for when I get fighting. This is a hero action attack. Deal 8 damage to an enemy. Wow. But that was the expensive card. And interrupt, okay, so there are interrupt effects. Thwart, when the villain schemes, reduce the amount of threat placed on the scheme by one. Okay, right. So they're the cards that I've got. Now, there's no point recovering, as I mentioned, because I haven't taken any damage. If I change to my alter ego, there's no point thwarting, because there are no, there's no threat on the actual thing. I could attack. And I could actually attack Rhino and start dealing damage to him. Um, and defense is when something attacks you, you can defend and then you'll take less damage. Also, this ability is Spider Sense. Interrupt. When the villain initiates an attack against you, draw one card. Okay, so I think that's what I'm going to do. Let's have a look. If you want to give me any tips and hints along the way or tell me what to do, please let me know. Um, uh, Andre is saying you don't. You don't exhaust until a card says you have to. Okay, right. Um, Rado's here. Hello, Richard. Thank you for joining in. He wants the promo card as well. <laughs> um, and Sherry's saying, yeah, he will say, exhaust your hero if you need to. Use your hero to exhaust the card. Right, okay. So, I, yeah, I'm going to change form into Spider-Man. And, and then, I think I'm just going to attack Rhino. But do I want to attack Rhino? Oh, no, do I want to play some of these cards first? Yeah. Or do we just attack Rhino? Let's just bash Rhino. Let, let's do the swinging web kick. Web kick. Um, so you're saying that this doesn't exhaust my character. So what I could actually do, could I use this to generate a resource? So could I use, yeah, Peter Parker's ability to generate a mental resource. So I've got a mental resource. Can I do this? 
then change form into Spider-Man and then play the swinging web kick, but instead of paying three for it, I only need to pay two because I have already generated the resource from this. There's the question. If you know the answer, please let me know in the chat. I'm just going to have a quick read of this rule here. Use a card with a resource ability which generates the resource specified by the ability. Any resources generated beyond the cost are lost after paying the cost. Okay, so I can't. You can only generate the resources when you're about to pay a cost. You can't store them up. Right. I'm going to do it anyway, so I need to pay three for this. Yeah, Andre's just said you can't pass them on. Thank you very much. So I've got to pay three for this, which basically means discarding three of these cards from my hand because all of these cost one resource. So since there's no minions in play, I'm going to get rid of the spider tracker. So that's one. Um, tenacity, I'm going to get rid of. That's two. I'm going to keep that. And I'm going to get rid of that as well. So there's the three resources that I have spent. Oh, sorry, I was going to put them on the left, wasn't I? So they go to my discard pile. And I think the rules say you put your discard piles sideways, which is odd. But I'm going to do it. And I deal eight damage to an enemy. So bosh. There you go. Rhino goes down from 14 down to 8. Well, that didn't take long, did it? Why is there a gap? Oh, there's a big there's big gaps. Right. Okay. So Rhino is down to 8 hit points. Sherry said you got a set at Gen Con. Right. Hmm. Where do we get promos? That's that's what I'm asking. So <laughs> full card versions of the Hero Alter. You probably had to play a, a thing, but I was working at Gen Con, so didn't have chance to grab a game. Anyway, right, um, what else can I do? I could do other stuff. I'll tell you what, I could have done something before that, couldn't I? Yeah. Yeah, let's just read wind a bit, because it's a learning game. Before I did that, I am going to play Heroic Intuition. Cost one resource here. I'm going to generate the resource from Peter Parker, so that goes into play. Then I'm going to change form. Then I'm going to play the swinging web kick, which costs... Oh, sorry, I had to pay two for this. One from Peter Parker and that. Then I play the swinging web kick that costs the three, so done. There you go. Rhino starts at 14, so it would be six. Yeah, I can't count. Thank you. <laughs> it's been a long day. 14 minus eight is six. So yeah, so I've actually got this. Play under any player's control, maximum one per play. Your hero has plus one THW. So I'm going to put it on this side. So, so Spider-Man's thwart is two, and I have no cards in hand. So at the end of my turn, so you don't redraw at the end of your turn. You redraw after all players have taken their turns. So discard any number of cards from my hand if I want to. No, and then draw back up to my hand size, and then ready all of my cards. So... I haven't actually done an attack either. I could attack as well. Let's do that. So I think I turn that sideways and do an attack and just do two damage. Yeah, I think that's what I've just, I think that's right. Because the, the swinging web kick, yeah, that if that doesn't exhaust my character, then I can still exhaust my character and use its uh, its basic attack power. So that's another two damage to Rhino. Excellent. So yes, so you draw back up to your hand size. Do you want to exhaust Spidey to attack? Yes, thank you, Sherry. That's the problem with the 20 second delay, is I, I'm just slightly ahead of you. But no, keep pointing these things out, because I am learning, and I am probably going to forget some stuff. And I'll try and play slower, which means you can help me out. So that red is... That's that done. That is the player's turn done. Now we go to the villain phase, where I get to do all of this stuff. And I'm even rustier on these rules. Um, so, first of all, place threat on the main scheme. So the scheme is here, and it needs to have seven on it. And the threat that you put on is, I think, this. It's one threat per player in the game. These are the threat markers. So one threat goes on there. I think that's right. Place threat, uh, yeah. Now, there, there could be other cards in play with acceleration on, um, and that would mean that you would add more threat. The next thing is step two. The villain and each engaged minion activates once per player in order. Now, 
I don't have any minions on me at the moment, so I'm okay. But what's interesting is that the villain activates per player. So he doesn't just activate once and attack somebody, it attacks everybody. And depending on what form you're in, depends on what they do. If you were in alter ego form, they would go off and do some scheming. But because I'm in hero form, the enemies attack. Uh, and I could potentially defend and, and everything else. So, yeah. Um, let's go through the attack rules. You should draw five cards of Spider-Man. Ah, right. Interesting. Hand size is five, but six is Peter Parker. I hadn't realised that. Which was the last card I drew? Probably that one. Let's shuffle it in. Interesting. Right, different hand size depending on which character you're in. That's something that's going to catch some players out, like me. So yeah, watch out for that. Right. So here's what happens when the enemy attacks. First of all, it gets a face down card from the encounter deck. Um, this is the boost card for the activation. So its attack is two, but it could be boosted by the card. Got an itchy nose, don't know why. Uh, what does it mean if you've got an itchy nose? Does it mean you're lying? I'm not lying, I'm really not. I'm reading the rules from the rule book. I'm not making it up. Um, right, the attacked player chooses if they want to defend or not. If I do defend, I exhaust my hero, which means I then can't do anything in my turn. Uh, and if I do defend, then I will prevent myself from taking three of the damage. But right now, with me being on 10 health, I'm not going to defend. So then we turn the boost card face up. David's here. Hello, David. Thank you for joining us. Uh, I'm about to get bashed by Rhino. So we turn over the card and we're looking, I believe, uh, for icons in the bottom right. And there aren't any icons in the bottom right. So it doesn't boost its... Um, it doesn't boost its attack value, so its attack is two. But because I didn't defend, I take two damage. Now, let's just have a look at the card that I've drawn. Because when I read the rules, it said that some cards have a star on them. And if it's got a star in the bottom right, and this doesn't, but if it did, it meant that there would be some kind of ability that would now trigger. It doesn't have a star, but it does have a when revealed ability. And I don't know if that triggers now. I don't think it does. Because this is, a, this is a card that wasn't drawn normally. It was a card that was basically drawn as a boost. It's a boost card. So I don't think it does anything else. I'm going to uh, let Andre and Sherry let me know if that's true or not. But I'm going to discard the card for no effect. And that is the enemy as attack. Then, step three, deal encounter card. So each player at this point in the game would get one encounter card dealt to them. The cards are all dealt out at the same time. And at this point, then the cards are revealed. I realise you can't see my card. There we go. And at this point, the cards are then revealed. Um, and we'll see what we get. And it's at this point where if you drew a treachery card, then it would affect you. Um, ah, use Spidey's spider sense. It's interrupt. When the villain initiates an attack against you, draw one card. Cool. Ah, so I'll have that card back. <laughs> I should have drawn earlier. There we go. Thank you. When the villain initiates attacking, so that's basically, you would get a card. You would always get a card because the villain will always attack you if you're in hero form. If I'm understanding this correctly. Right, what card have we drawn? Simultaneously reveal, no. So you simultaneously deal them out, but you reveal them one at a time. It's a little bit unusual because in Arkham, you, you draw one and then the next person draws one. And in this, you just deal them out first. But they're revealed one at a time. Right. We have drawn a minion. We have drawn, oh, it's a shocker. It's got a scheme of one, two attack, and when revealed, deal one damage to each hero. So, minion. When, your minion, when a minion is revealed, it enters play engaged with the player who revealed the card. There you go. And I assume the when revealed effect does happen. So I take one damage from the shocker. Um, right. Next, so there's rules here about side schemes, but I don't think that matters. Pass the first player token. And that's it. That is a, that is a whole round done. So it is my turn. Right, what are we going to do? We are still Spider-Man. We've got Rhino down to four health. A couple of other punches. We'll be fine. We've also got first aid. We have a web shooter, uh, which is quite cool. So I could attack it. 
I could attack Rhino and then switch form. Oh, I've also got a minion in play. So how do I get rid of minions? I guess I attack them. Just like I attacked um, Rhino. I can attack a minion. Basic attack. Deal damage to one eligible enemy. Either a villain or a minion. Is that a cat? Yes, that's a cat. Loki! Our cats are called Thor and Loki, which is very appropriate. Although there's no Thor and Loki in this set yet. I'm assuming they will be here in some expansion sets later on. Um, yeah, so I could attack this uh, minion. Otherwise, it's going to be doing stuff. What have we got here? Great responsibility, first aid. Oh, Daredevil is an ally. Because four to play. Wow. Ah, but I have these cards. These cards, if you look in the bottom left. Right, nice. Because these have got double icons on. And they're both maximum of one per deck. Yeah, not surprised. So I could put Daredevil into play by playing these two cards, which is what I'm going to do. I just want to make sure I do things in the right order. Because can my allies attack on the turn that they come into play using an ally? Use any number of allies they control to attack or thwart a scheme. Uh, exhaust it. You do the stuff. Yeah, so playing an ally. Oh, you can have three allies in play. Okay. Um, I think they come into play normally. Yeah, put it into play, ready. Right, so allies can go as soon as they come into play. Uh, and after Daredevil thwart, deal one damage to an enemy. Okay, well, he's thwarted two. There's only one threat on there, so that's probably a little bit of a waste. I'll probably, I'm happy with that threat as it is. Um, I've got some first aid so I can heal myself. But I am going to put Daredevil into play. So that that is fighting me. In fact, can we put it here? Yeah, let's put it here. Right, so I'm going to play Daredevil. And I'm going to spend Genius and Energy to do that, which is four resources. So that's that. Um... Yeah, let, let's just beat Rhino up. Let's do it. So Spider-Man is going to attack Rhino just with two attack. So that exhausts. Rhino is down to two. There you go. And then Daredevil is going to attack Rhino. Daredevil's attack is two, but there is a little small icon on here, if you can see. And that is, uh, basically, he'll damage himself uh, when he does that. That's how allies work. What's it called? It is... Counter something damage? Consequential damage. That's it. So we're going to exhaust Daredevil. We do two damage to Rhino, but the consequential damage, which is... Put a little damage on there. Um, yeah, he just takes consequential damage. If an ally... If the ally that attacked has any damage icons, deal the amount of damage to the ally. Yeah, okay. So Rhino, we've got rid of stage one of Rhino. There we go. That was all right. So let's have a look at Rhino. I'm Rhino. I knock things down. That's what I do. That's who I am. So I think that's gone. Right, we are now in Rhino stage two. When revealed, so, uh, well, 15 hit points first. So let's put that on. 15. There we go. Um, search the encounter deck and discard pile for the breaking and taking side scheme and reveal it. And then shuffle the encounter deck. Right. So we need the breaking and taking side scheme. Let's have a look. It's a, it's a landscape card. The side scheme's a landscape. So here we go. Breaking and taking. Shuffle the encounter deck. AJ says, you haven't played any true LCGs. This is feeling a bit like Aeon's End Legacy. Uh, I haven't played Aeon's End Legacy. I have played Aeon's End, which was quite nice. So, yeah, I mean, this is a kind of... They, they, they've been developing their LCG brand for a while, and there's, you know, different bits of different games brought into them. Um, and this one is similar to some of the other ones, but, yeah, sufficiently different for it to be standalone. Right. Rhino is breaking things and taking them. When revealed, place an additional 
uh, one per player threat here. OK. And then it has a hazard icon, which is basically deal one plus one encounter card during the villain phase. Right. Where am I going to put that? Let's put it here. In fact, what we can do is we can put it here. Yeah, let's put it there. Right, so we deal a threat there and and then shuffle the encounter deck. Do we shuffle this back in? I think we probably do. Search the encounter deck and discard pile, shuffle the encounter deck. Hmm, not sure. I'm not going to, but I, I possibly should. Um, right. So that's that's that. I attacked. I attacked. I've done that. Yeah, done that. Done that. Right. Now I can switch form, and I think that's what I'm going to do. So Spider Man is going to switch form back into Peter Parker. Can take his mask off, and now I can use this ability here. I believe I can still use this when I'm exhausted. To generate a mental resource limit once per round, and I will use that mental resource to play a web shooter. So I'm going to upgrade myself. I'm going to have a web shooter, uh, which has got three web counters on it. So you use these generic counters. One, two, three. Enters play with three counters. When those are gone, discard this card. Hero resource. Exhaust web shooter and remove one web counter to generate a whatever resource that is. Wild resource. Okay. So there we go. It looks like it's just a resource generation thing. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this card, discard it as one resource, to play first aid, to heal two damage from any character, and I'm going to heal damage to myself. So I'm back up to nine. Right, end of my go. And now I do draw six, because I'm back in Peter Parker, so I'm my alter ego. One, two, three, four, five, six. Gosh, right, okay. Now it's the villain phase. So, place threat on the main scheme, which I think is still just one. Yeah, I think it's one. We haven't got any acceleration or anything like that. Um, uh, the villain and each engaged minion activates once per player. So I'm going to get attacked by Shocker. And I'm also going to get attacked by Rhino. No, I'm not going to get attacked by Rhino because I'm in alter ego form. So I'm not actually going to get attacked. They are going to activate against me. And because I'm in alter ego form, they won't come after me and beat me up when I'm Peter Parker. What they will do is they will generate a threat. So if the player is in alter ego form, the villain and each minion engage with me schemes. To resolve this activation, perform the following steps. Give the villain a face down card from the encounter deck. This is the boost card. Okay. Flip the boost card face up. And I'm looking for icons in the bottom right. And there wasn't any. Excellent. And it's a treachery card. But again, I don't think this matters. I'm purely looking for the icons in the bottom right. So no boost. So its scheme is one. Place threat on the main scheme equal to the villain's modified SCH value. So that one goes on there. Um, just thinking. It's this breaking and taking said, place an additional one threat here. And do these work like the Doom counters in Arkham Horror? Does that one threat count to this card? I guess it does. Yeah. Okay. We'll see. Um, if any minions are engaged with the player resolving this activation, those minions now scheme one at a time. So this minion schemes and has got a scheme of one. So that's another one on there. Actually, this is getting quite close. So this is this is five. And if it gets to seven, they win. Right. Minions don't boost their scheme. So you don't draw cards for them. Right. OK. There you go. Now, deal an encounter card for each player. But because of this, this hazard... Deal plus one encounter card during the villain phase, which is now. This is the villain phase. Uh, an additional encounter card is dealt during step three of the villain phase. The dealt in player order. Right, so I get two cards dealt to me. 
and let's see what we get. Uh, Adam's here. Hello, Adam. We will be playing this, me and you, <laughs> a lot. Uh, right. When revealed, alter ego. Yes, I am in Peter Parker. Right. This card gains surge. Right. So in other words, it does nothing because I'm in alter ego form. But because it did nothing, it gains surge and I draw a new card. That's what surge does. Oh, Sandman. Oh, he's quite tough. Yeah, he's quite tough. And it says, this, oh, he literally is quite tough. This character enters play with a toughness state, a tough status card. Right, status cards. Don't know what these do. Let's have a look. Tough. The next time this character would take any amount of damage, discard this card instead. Right. So, basically, it's got some shielding. Um, okay, ouch. Right, my second card is, oh, here we go. Shadow of the Past. When revealed, reveal your set-aside nemesis minion. <laughs> it's all kicked off. Uh, and put it into play, engaged with you. Right, so my set-aside nemesis minion was... Uh, which one of these is it? There we go, Vulture. So this is my nemesis minion. Vulture has just entered the game. I'm going to have to zoom out because we can't see everything now. Where's my zoomy device gone? There we go. I can move things this way a little bit. I can go there, I can go there, I can go there. Right, so I've got these three minions on me now. Uh, right, what else do we do? Shuffle the rest of your set-aside Nemesis encounter set into the encounter deck. If your Nemesis minion does not enter the game this way, this card gains Surge. Right, so all of these other cards here which are my nemesis, these now enter. This is a really cool mechanism, and this is something different from this game. Thank you, Carl. Carl's got to go. Um, in the way that cards will get added to this deck, depending on you know, what happens during the game. So yeah, my nemesis minion has cropped up and is causing me trouble. Oh dear, I've just read what his ability is. It's got quick strike. After this minion engages your hero, it attacks. It has an attack of three. Ah, after this minion engages your hero. I'm not in hero form. So, let's just check. Have I done this right? It says, put it into play, engaged with you. But it didn't engage my hero. So I don't think it attacks me. Is that right? Let me know. Let me know in the chat if that is right. Because I was in alter ego form when Vulture engaged with me, it doesn't do its quick strike ability. In fact, I'm going to have a look now at the rules reference book under quick strike. Uh, see keywords, page 10. After this enemy engages a player, it immediately attacks that player if they are in hero form. Yes, which I'm not. So it doesn't. Excellent. Right. What else? Uh, we're done. Pass the first player token. So, so it's me. Oh, I'll tell you what I should have done. Sorry, at the end of my previous turn, I should have readied these cards. Forgot to do that. Right, so it's my turn. We have a problem because if this gets seven threat, I lose the game. And I've got these three bad guys on me. And that one's really tough. That one's really tough. And that one's really tough. So if I stay in Peter Parker mode, they're going to uh, they're going to basically scheme and I'm going to lose the game. So I'm going to need to switch modes before the end of my turn. I mean, this is in the solo game. I don't know how it works in the multiplayer game. You know, if one of you stays in hero form and the other one stays in... Uh, oh, because it engages with each player individually. Yeah, so each player has to choose individually. Yeah, you've got to work this out. It's a bit of a puzzle, which I quite like. I think I'm going to have to do some thwarting. Because that will then reduce these numbers on here. But if I'm thwarting, I'm not getting rid of these. But Daredevil has an ability that when he thwarts, deal one damage to an enemy. And that one damage to an enemy can get rid of Sandvan's toughness. What cards we've got? Strength. Gives me two physical power. For justice. Remove three threat from a scheme. Oh. Well, that's pretty good. Yeah, that is pretty good. 
I'm not sure why these say hero action thwart. That's the bit I'm a bit confused about. And, and you're saying it doesn't say actions three. The fact that it says hero action thwart. If a triggered ability is labeled as an attack, such as hero action attack, resolving that ability is considered to attack the specified target. Unless specified by the ability, a hero does not exhaust when using such an ability. Okay, it specifically says that. Right. So yeah, so I could just play this and that would remove three threat or even four if I paid for it using a mental resource. Using a mental resource? So, because it, it costs two, does that mean if it costs, it, do I have to pay for it with two mental or could it just be one mental? There's a rules question for you, for those people still watching. Can I pay for this with one mental and one other? That's the question. Avengers Mansion. Okay, that's that's a good card to get out early on. Nick Fury. Hey, good old Nick. Oh, he's a little bit like Gandalf. <laughs> Quote of the day. When he enters play, I can remove two threat, draw three cards, or deal four damage. Yeah. And then at the end of the round, if Nick Fury is in play, discard him. It's exactly what the Gandalf card, I think, does in the Lord of the Rings game. He appears, does one cool thing, and then and then disappears. So I think we're going to have to play that. Because that's going to fix a lot of our problems. I think that's going to fix a lot of our problems. Uh, Sherry says, you have to be in hero form to use it, though. Yeah. One mental. So if I pay for it with one mental and one of something else, that counts. Okay, right. Let's have a think about this. I'm going to play Nick Fury. No, I'm not. Well, I am, but I'm going to do Daredevil first. So I'm going to use Daredevil to thwart the scheme. So his thwart is two. So I'm going to exhaust him to remove two threat from the scheme. Again, I think this one, when it says place an additional one threat here, I think all threat does add up together wherever it is. I'm just going to check that. Threat. Threat tokens are used to track the amount of threat on scheme cards. Yeah, I know that. Uh, enemy schemes, main scheme. It's got to be, because otherwise what's the point of having it on there? Uh, enemy schemes. If a villain is scheming, give it... Yeah. Oh, no, that's enemy schemes, not enemy schemes. Are they in here? No, can't find it. I'll wait for Sherry to answer the question. So the question is, does this one threat that's on this card actually count towards this card as well? And I can't find, I can't find that in here. It probably is somewhere. I'm pretty sure it is. They're pretty good with the rule books these days. Anyway, Daredevil's responsibility is after Daredevil thwarts, deal one damage to an enemy. So we're going to deal one damage to Sandman, which removes the toughness card. Then what we're going to do is we're going to generate four resources to play Nick Fury. One resource is going to be from Peter Parker. Then I'm going to generate two resources from Strength. And I need to generate one more resource. And I'm going to generate it from... Uh, this interrogation room. I'm going to get rid of this interrogation room for the other one resource to play Nick Fury. So Nick Fury comes into play. Is Nick an ally? Yes, Nick is an ally. You can have three allies in play. I only have one at the moment. So Nick Fury arrives. Hello, Nick. Uh, and after Nick Fury enters play, choose one. Remove two threat from the scheme, draw three cards, or deal four damage to an enemy. Four damage to an enemy. Sandman has been defeated. Excellent. Right, that's that done. Oh, and I can still use him to attack as well. Brilliant. Yeah, let's do that. So then Peter Parker is going to switch forms. There we go. Um, and yeah, let's do some attacking. So Nick Fury is going to use his two attack and he takes a consequential damage. Oh, in fact, Daredevil should have taken a consequential damage as well. So Nick takes consequential damage, but deals two damage to Vulture. Let's get some more ones. 
Um, and then Peter, uh, and then Spider Man does his attack and deals two damage to Vulture. And that's Vulture gone as well. I think I've done that right. Sherry says, it should be underside, underside schemes. I believe they keep gaining threat and have, they have their own loose condition, but it may depend on the card. Okay, thank you. Yeah, because it specifically said place it here. Didn't say play it on the same scheme. Side schemes, 15. Yeah, it is a side scheme. Uh, side scheme. Side scheme is an encounter card that represents additional obstacles. Each side scheme enters play with an amount of threat on it equal to the card's starting threat value as indicated in the bottom of the card. Oh, is that that? Two? Ah, so it should have started with two and then when revealed, place an additional one threat there because it's a one player game. Right, okay. But then, okay, there's probably another card that will trigger based on how many threats on that card, I guess. A side scheme remains in play until there is no threat on it or until a card ability removes it from, from play. Interesting. It's kind of like a little bit of a story, but without the without the actual narrative elements. Um, okay, right. I think I got that right. Thank you very much, Sherry. Meanwhile, what was happening? We got rid of that. We've beat that up. I've still got three cards in hand. I do have this web shooter, which is basically... I can now use it because it says hero resource. Um, exhaust web shooter and remove a counter from it to generate a wild resource. So that's a resource if I want it. Um, no, I don't think I do. I think I'm going to... And I'm okay for health. So I don't think I need this. Avengers Mansion is probably a bit late for that now. Exhaust Avengers Mansion, choose a player, that player draws one card. I mean, it's great. I just, I'm just not sure. Yeah, so I'm actually going to discard that card at the end of my turn, which you can do. I'm going to keep these two in play. Uh, no, in fact, I'm going to get rid of that one as well. I'm just going to go for drawing my attack cards. Draw up to my hand size, which is five. So I draw another four cards. Two, three, four. Uh, which of the icons is on the side scheme? It's the plus one card. So last time I drew, I drew, I don't know why I'm looking there. I should be looking there. I drew two encounter cards last time. Um, right. Readies all of their exhausted cards, which I forgot to do last time. So there's that. We have five cards. And it is now the villain's phase. So because I'm in hero form. Oh, place threat on the main scheme. I think I forgot to do that last time. Yeah, I think I forgot to do that last time. So I'm going to do it now. So it gets threat anyway. And then the villain activates. And because I'm in hero form, the villain is now attacking me. Uh, and Rhino 2's attack is 3, so we draw the boost card, and I choose whether I want to defend or not. I think I have to make this decision at this point, and I don't think I'm going to. Um, I don't think I'm going to defend because I'm on 9 health. Um, so I'm just going to take this, and we've got... Ah, now, this is nasty. Double icon in the bottom right, if you can see that. That means Rhino has just dealt me five damage. Oh, I'll tell you what I should have done. You can defend with allies, can't you? Just remembered that. Of course I would have done that, because Nick Fury is about to disappear. Quick undo. Rewind. If a villain attacks, chooses if they want to defend. To defend, they must either exhaust their hero or exhaust an ally they control. So yeah, of course I would have done that, because Nick is about to be discarded. So I would have defended with Nick. Five damage was dealt. Nick's dead, but he was going to disappear anyway. So there you go. Quick rewind. It's a solo game. Doesn't matter. Nobody's watching. Apart from all you lot. Um, right. And then this attacks and just basically deals me two damage. And do I want to take... Yeah. No, I'll take the two damage. That's fine. I'll go down to seven. There we go. 
Deal an encounter card to each player. Oh, that gets discarded. Deal an encounter card to each player, but actually it's two encounter cards because of this. Oh, and you can get rid of that by getting rid of the... Uh, that's probably what I should have done. Right, one, two. Now let's reveal the cards. It's my obligation. Right, the eviction notice. Give to the Peter Parker player. You may flip to alter ego form. Okay, if I want to, but I don't have to. Uh, and if I'm in, I can exhaust Peter Parker to remove eviction notice from the game. Or discard one card at random from your hand. Oh, do I do that now? Yeah, I think I do this now. So I can flip to alter ego form if I want to, and then I can exhaust Peter Parker to basically remove him from the game. Or discard a card at random from your hand. Discard this, but it gets surge. Which means I draw another card instead. Um Depends what I'm planning to do next turn. No, okay. Um, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to choose the second one. So I'm not going to change into Alter Your Ego. So I'm going to choose the second option. Discard a card at random from my hand. And we've lost another web shooter, which is fine. Um, discard this and uh, this card gains Surge. So I get another one. Right, next. Gang up. When revealed, if I'm in my alter ego form, which I'm not, so when revealed in hero form, the villain and each minion engaged with you attacks you. Oh, right. Okay, so they're just attacking. So same thing. It's attacking and it's getting a boost card. Do I want to defend based on the fact that I'm on seven health? Um, yeah, I think I do. I'm just looking at what cards I've got. I have backflip. Interrupt. When you would take any amount of damage from an attack, prevent all of that damage. Yeah, okay. So I'm not going to defend. We'll reveal the card. It's got two boost icons on, so it is five damage. I backflip away, which costs nothing, so that's quite cool, and I just take no damage. Awesome. Spidey backflips. And then my second encounter card, uh, you don't think minions get boost? No, they don't. No, minions just do their normal. This was the, this was Rhino attacking me. Um, right, oh. so it's highway robbery side scheme. When revealed, each player places a random card from their hand face down here. Okay, so it's another side scheme. This one has acceleration. So it's going to add to the threat that gets added to the break-in. Uh, and when defeated, return each face down card here to its owner's hand. And it starts with three threat per player. So that goes there and got, has got three threat on it. And I have to put a random card... From my hand which is mockingbird so that can go there ouch right and that is it it is now my go okay so what's our objectives now we've got this break in and taking which we don't know what effect that's going to have on the game we've got the master scheme the main scheme which has got three threat out of seven and we've got this one which is going to cause that one to accelerate so we could try and get rid of this one uh, Daredevil's thwart is two. Spidey's thwart is base one, but plus one because of the heroic intuition. Um, and then I've got some. I've, I've got some cards. They're not very good cards. Well, they're good cards, but it costs four to play, and I've only got two cards in hand. Um, Ash is here. Hi, Ash. Thank you for joining me. Um, we're only on like round four, and it's it's tight. It's very interesting. It, it's um, yeah. There's, there's a lot going on. What am I going to do? I kind of want to get rid of that highway robbery, but that's using my entire turn. On order or cards as well, except I can't draw cards. And I kind of want to beat up the shocker. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot that I want to do. Um, okay, so here's what I'm going to do. 
Spider-Man is going to attack for two. He's going to deal two damage to the Shocker. One, two. Okay. Yep. I think that's that. Then Daredevil is going to thwart this scheme here, removing two threat from it. And then whenever he thwarts, deal one damage to an enemy, deal one damage to Shocker. So that's Shocker gone. But then consequential damage on Daredevil. Daredevil is now gone. Right. So that's that. Um, do I, I want to stay as Spider-Man? Or do I want to change back? Hmm. Interesting. There's very little cards I can do. I, I can, I, yeah, I can't play this card. And this card is, when any amount of threat would be placed on a scheme, take it as damage instead. I don't think I want these cards. I'm going to get rid of both of these cards. I'm going to declare my... Oh, do I want to change back to Spider-Man? <laughs> no. I change back to... No, I'm going to stay as Spider-Man. Uh, did you draw the card when the villain attacked? No, I forgot. Thank you very much. Yeah, Spidey Sense. Lots of things to remember. Uh, would that change what I was doing? Yes. Well, yeah, I'm going to keep that card in hand. Thank you very much. I did forget about that. So I'm going to keep that, discard those two, then draw back up to my hand size of five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, it's looking good. We've got another swinging web kick. Um, then it's the villains go. So the, 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 the main scheme, I believe, now gets two threat. One from this and one because of this. So I'm just going to stick a three on there. So it's on five, which is not good. Uh, then the villain and each engaged minion activates. I have no engaged minions with me right now. So the villain activates. I'm in hero form, so it attacks me. Its attack is three. It gets a boost card. I am not going to defend. In fact, I can't defend because I'm exhausted. So we look for the boost icons and we have two. So it's going to deal five damage. But then I backflip away again and take no damage. There we go. That's that. Whew. Now, deal an encounter card to each player, which is two encounter cards because of that. So one, two. The first one is false alarm. When revealed, you are confused. If you are already confused, this card gains surge. Now, confused is one of these status cards. The next time this character will thwart or scheme, discard this status card instead. I don't want that. So what I'm going to do is I am going to use my enhanced spider sense. Oh, I did. I forgot it again, didn't I? I forgot my I forgot my spider sense. It attacked me. I should have drawn a card. I will get used to it. Uh, right. So anyway, the false alarm has a when revealed ability, but I am going to use my enhanced spider sense, which I need to pay for with one. Can I use the web shooter? I think I can. I need to generate a resource, so I will activate the web shooter and pay for it. Uh, cancel its when revealed effects, which is that. So that's gone. Right, next card. Assault. When revealed in hero form, the villain attacks you. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, it's fine, he says. Oh, this could be nasty. This could be nasty. I'm going to take it. I'm going to take it. It's a learning game. So the villain attacks me. I can't defend. What have I got here? No. See, I could, I could have prevented it with that, but I'm not going to. So uh, um, boost card. Boost card is one. So I take four damage. Ouch, ouch, ouch. Two, three, four. So I'm on three health. Unexhaust at the end of your turn. Yes, you're right. I forgot to do that again. So I could have defended myself, but never mind, I didn't. Yeah, so you, you unexhaust at the end of all player turns before it goes into the villain phase. Right, that's the two treachery cards. Pass the first play token. It's my go. 
what am I going to do? Rhino is still on 15. I have these two side schemes in, in play that are causing me trouble. I haven't drawn any other allies. Oh, brother. I mean, I could absolutely beat Rhino up and I'd deal 10 damage to him, but it's not enough. It's not enough at all. I have this, remove three threat from a scheme or four if you pay for it using a mental resource. Well, that's a bit of a waste on this one because there's only one there. But I could get rid of four off this and then, and then we're okay. Yeah, let's do that. So Spider-Man is going to go bosh. And he's going to... He's going to do two attack on Rhino. There you go. I've made a start. Down to 13. Okay. Um, Jimmy's here. Hello, Jimmy. Thank you for joining in. So yeah, so Spider-Man has attacked Rhino and done two damage. Then I'm going to change back... To Peter Parker, and I am going to use. I am going to play this card for justice, and I need to pay for it with two resources. One of them is going to be generated from Peter Parker, uh, and the other one is going to be generated by this Spider Tracer. Uh, so I remove four threat from a scheme. So I'm going to remove four threat from there. So there you go. That has really slowed that down. Um, and I'm going to keep these cards in hand. That is the end of my turn. Let's try and remember to do everything. Not going to discard any cards from hand. I draw up to my hand size of six. Two, three, four, five, six. And then I unexhaust all of my cards. Right. Now it's the villain phase. The threat goes up by one, two because of that. One, two. Then the villain and each engaged minion activates. I am in... Alter Ego form. Don't forget to run another card because of the Spider Sense. Draw another card because of the Spider Sense. Uh, when was that? Oh yeah, when it attacked me because of... This. Yes, never mind. Sorry, I forgot that. Yeah, every time it attacks me, if I'm in Spider form, if I'm in Spider-Man form, I should be drawing cards every time it attacks me. Yeah, thank you. I keep forgetting that, Jonathan. Um, so yeah, because I'm in alter ego form, it doesn't attack me. It schemes instead. It's only got a scheme of one, but it boosts. And it boosts and it gets another one. So two goes on there. And it's back up to five already. Wow. If that ever gets to seven, I lose. Right. Uh, I get two encounter cards still because of this breaking and taking. Definitely going to have to do something about that. <laughs> I say I'm going to have to do something about everything. Um, pretty sure you can't use justice because you're not in your hero form. Yep, you're absolutely right. So let's undo that quickly because I would have... I would have still... So it wouldn't have removed... Uh, oh, what could I have paid for it with? Okay, I'll pay for it with this. There you go. So I still paid for it with a mental, so it still removed four threat. And then I did that before I switched forms. Yeah. Um, for justice, just say hero action, so you've got to be in hero form to use it. Thank you. This is really good, you guys helping me out learn, learn how to play this game. Thank you for this. Right. Where are we up to now? Completely lost track of where we were. Somebody remind me. That was it. It schemed. Dealing encounter card to each player. That was what I was about to do. Yes, and I'm drawing two. So, first card is Stampede. When revealed, if you are in alter ego form, this card gains Surge. Caught off guard. When revealed, discard an upgrade or support you control. If no cards were discarded, this card gains surge. I'm going to get rid of this one then. This is an upgrade. Yeah, let's get rid of that one. Okay, and then my second card. 
I'm tough. When revealed, give Rhino a tough status card. If he already has one, this card gains... Right, this is not good. Okay. Done. My go. Need friends. Haven't got any friends. Sad times. Okay, so this surveillance team is quite good. That can remove threat from things, which we really need to do, because I am rubbish at removing threat. Oh, there's also healing. I could actually heal. Right, let's do this. First of all, I'm going to exhaust Peter Parker to recover three. So I'm back up to six health. There you go. I've had a bit of a rest. Next, I'm going to play the Power of Justice which doubles the number of resources that this card generates while paying for a justice card, which is a yellow card. So it's normally one resource, but because I'm actually going to use it to pay for the su uh, surveillance team, which is a yellow card, it counts as two. So the surveillance team comes into play. It's got three counters on it. And I can, as an action, exhaust surveillance team, remove a counter to remove one threat from a scheme, get rid of that. That's gone. Finally, I get the card back. And the acceleration has gone, which is Mockingbird, which is an ally. Excellent. Right. So, um, do I want to play that as an ally? Do I want to change forms? I think I possibly do now. Yeah. I'm going to switch forms into Spider-Man. Uh, I'm going to use. I'm going to play a card. Is it going to be that? Oh. Yeah. Yeah. I'm. I'm deciding whether to play. Mockingbird, or to do the swinging web kick and deal eight damage. That gets him down to five. Oh no, he's tough. So the next time damage is dealt, it doesn't actually deal anything. Right, so forget that. I'm going to play Mockingbird, so I need to pay for it with three resources. That's going to be one. Uh, then I'm going to get rid of this surveillance team as another one, and the interrogation room as another one. So I've paid for it with three. Um, so Mockingbird comes into play as an ally, and then Mockingbird is going to attack, going to attack Rhino just for one damage, but that gets rid of the tough, and when Mockingbird comes into play, stun an enemy, the next time this character would attack, discard the status card instead, so stunned, done the damage, and then uh, thingy what's it damage, consequential damage on Mockingbird. Right, and I'm keeping that in hand. And I think that's it. I think I've remembered to do everything this time. So all of my cards ready. And I draw back up to my hand size, which is five. Now there's something that happens when your deck runs out. And I don't think this is actually covered in the Let's Play. But I need to look it up. Oh, got Jessica Jones. And I have two swinging web kicks. Both of those delay damage each. So if I can just get some resources, I can beat Rhino up and we're done. Right, it's now the villain phase. So we get how many threat on the main scheme? It's one. So the main scheme is up to six. It gets one more, I lose the game. Then the villain activates, but it's stunned, so it doesn't. Excellent, right. Then I get two encounter cards because of the breaking and taking. First one, sweeping swoop. When revealed, stun your hero. Uh, if Vulture is in play, this card gains Surge. Vulture is not in play. So, okay. Whew. Charge. Attached to Rhino. Forced into... Oh, no, that's... Yeah. What? what? Forced into... When Rhino attacks, the attack gains Overkill. So excess damage to an ally carries over. And at the end of this attack, discard Charge. Okay, so the next time it attacks, it's going to be attacking with six. And if I put an ally in the way... Any remaining damage tramples through. Nasty. How familiar are you with the IP? Fairly familiar. Um, 
Yeah, mainly the MCU. Have read a number of the comics, um, but mainly the MCU and subsequent TV series and Netflix and things like that. Right. I, I didn't know of Rhino, and I didn't really know of Vulture. So yeah, maybe I'm not that much of an expert. I thought Green Goblin was Spider-Man's nemesis. Um, right. I think that's the villain phase done. So it's my go. Right. What am I going to do? Am I going to be able to win this round? I don't think I am. So the next time Spider-Man would attack, I have to discard this card. So I think because if I want to play my swinging web kick, that counts as an attack. So I, I'm going to have to get rid of the stunned card in order to just... Yeah, I think I'm, I'm one damage short of being able to get rid of it this turn. So I think Spider-Man is going to do a normal attack for two, but actually he doesn't. I just discard this card instead. But then I'm going to do my swinging web kick. So I'm going to use the web shooter for one, and then that is now discarded, I believe. Yep. Okay, so that's one resource. Did you draw your card? What would I draw my card for? For, for the spider sense, it didn't attack me because it was stunned. So I don't. I didn't draw the card because it didn't actually attack me. Um, so yeah, I've paid. I've paid one resource for that. Um, I. Ooh, it's probably a bit late for the helicarrier. So two resources. Three resources for the swinging web kick. Bosh, eight damage. Eight damage on Rhino. Down to five. Okay. Uh, we have Mockingbird in play. Oh, I can use the surveillance team. Oh, yeah, because otherwise I'm going to lose next turn. Yeah, that would be bad. Lose losing would be bad. So I do that to remove one threat. Then do we use Mockingbird to attack, or do we just wait next turn and keep my swinging web kick? Yeah, so we'll use Mockingbird to remove another threat, just in case, and then she takes the consequential damage. Um, and then I think that's... Do I want to play Jessica Jones? She costs three. I haven't got three, so I can't. So, yeah, let's not worry about that. Now, I could stay in Spider-Man form. I think I'm going to. Although it does have charge. Yeah. Is that going to kill me? I'm going to have to defend. Yeah, defend and then come back with the swinging web kick next turn. I think that's what we're going to do. Right. Done. I'm going to get rid of that card and I'm going to draw four more. And then my card's ready. Now, my deck is empty. So let's have a look in the rules reference for what happens when you get an empty deck, which is the player reshuffles their discard pile to make a new deck. That player immediately deals, deals themselves one card from the encounter deck. Right. So your deck runs out. You reshuffle it and put it back in. But you do get a card from the encounter deck. So that happens now. Ouch. Joel's here. Hello, Joel. Thank you for joining me. Have you got a copy of this yet? I think you have, haven't you? I think I saw you that you did a review video of it last week. Maybe I might be, I might be imagining things. Um, yeah, this is really good. <laughs> it's really, really good. I can't wait to play this multiplayer. But solo, it is definitely a a, a challenge and a puzzle. Two rounds in, I thought this was going to be a walkover, um, and then all of a sudden things started happening, and then it started looking very, very bleak. Right, so that's done. I get a card because I've had to reshuffle my deck. And it is Enhanced Ivory Horn. Attached to Rhino. Right, Rhino has an extra one attack permanently. And I can spend three physical resources to get rid of the card. Okay, so Rhino is now super, super tough. It's getting a little bit worrying. Right, that was me drawing back up to my hand at the end of my turn. So it's the villain phase. We get one threat 
on there. And then the villain is going to attack me. So my spider sense, sense kicks in. I get a card. Have I got anything that I can use as some kind of reaction? No, 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 no. Right. So I am going to have to defend myself. There's no point defending myself with Mockingbird because it's got this charge. So all of the damage is just going to go over anyway. Spider-Man has a three defense and I am low on health. So I am going to defend myself for three. So Rhino's attacking for three, six, seven, plus the boost card of... I could die here. Two boost. So three, six, seven, eight, nine. I think I'm dead. Yep, yeah, I'm dead. So nine minus the three defense is six. Spider-Man gets knocked out by Rhino because of these two cards. The charge and the enhanced ivory horn. Yeah, just got me. He got very, very angry. Screwed his enhanced ivory horn on, which he bought on eBay. Um, and then dealt me nine damage in one go. I think that was right. So, wow. Okay, so there's a very, very big problem with this game, is I want to spend 23 hours a day playing it, and I don't have that time. This is really good. So if you want a review after one play, I mean, I was always going to like this game. I like Fantasy Flight games, card games. I think Arkham Horror is fantastic. I'm not too keen on their competitive ones. Netrun is amazing. But I didn't get on with Game of Thrones, first or second edition. I didn't get on with... Uh, Legends of the Five Rings. It was just too complicated. There was just too much going on. Uh, I like their cooperative card games. I'm a massive Marvel fan. I always thought I was going to like this game. And this was brilliant. This is really, really good. And the fact that this scenario is customizable, you can choose one of five uh, different encounter sets to put in. Um, and you can play with different characters. And that will add different other things in. Yeah, I really enjoyed this. So anyway... Thank you very much to Sherry for helping me out with all of the rules questions along the way. There was definitely a few things that I forgot. I kept forgetting about Spider-Man's Spider-Sense. Didn't realise that they're different hand sizes on different sides of the cards. The other thing to watch out for is some of the cards say hero action. You can only use that if you're in hero form. Um, there's, yeah, there's a few bits to remember. It isn't as simple. I didn't know if this game was going to be one where... Um, you know, people who were not gamers, who were just Marvel fans, could buy it and they'd be fine with it. I, I don't think they would be initially, and I don't mean to insult them or anything, but I thought this was going to be a relatively simple game. And there is actually a lot going on and there's a lot of things to remember in it, but it works. It works really well. Chris is asking, how similar is it to the LOTR, the Lord of the Rings LCG? So I played the Lord of the Rings LCG when it came out. I don't think it is. Really, apart from it, it's cooperative and there is an encounter deck. Um, but I mean, the thing is, they've built on all of their LCGs. The more and more they've released. So the, the Arkham Horror one builds on the Lord of the Rings LCG, um, but with bits from other games as well. There's a lot from the Warhammer Quest adventure card game with the whole threat area and engaging. It, it has the schemes which you put threat on which I think the Lord of the Rings game has got something similar, does it? I can't remember. But we played today with the break-in, which is a very, very simple scenario, which is, here's the card. When it gets this amount of threat, you lose the game. If we look at the other ones, which I put aside earlier on, where did I put them? Uh, I just want to show you quickly what they are. Here we go. So if we skip ahead to the Ultron scenario, there's actually three of them, which is a little bit like the Arkham Horror game in that you get through 1A, you get you get to 1B, once 1B advances, you go to 2A, and there's a, yeah, there's a story and there's a progression. So that's going to take a lot longer. Yeah, this is really good. Um, yeah, there you go. Thank you very much to everybody for joining in. Yeah, uh, yeah, it was just really good. I, I, can't, I can't say it enough. I'm definitely going to be playing this again. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you found it useful. Um, as I say, I only browse through the rules ahead of time. 
So this is going to reflect possibly what your first game is going to be like. You're probably going to make some of the same mistakes as I made, but hopefully the fact that you watched me make them three times um, might make you go, oh yeah, we'll, we'll remember to do that. The encounter deck ran, never run out, but when it does, I think something bad happens. I think the, you get more threat on there or something like that. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm going to wrap things up now. So yeah, thank you very much for watching. Uh, and as I mentioned at the start, this is not a commission video at all. If it was a commission video, I would have learned properly how to play rather than fumbling through the rules. So all of this and a lot of the other videos that I do is only possible through the support of my Patreon campaign. So if you like what you see and you want to support the channel and help me keep going, then yeah, patreon.com forward slash gaming rules. Um, and yeah, other than that, thank you very much again for everybody for watching. Take care and I'll see you all next time.